Hi everybody, this is Joanne and you're here in my lab again and we're destroying gummy bears once again, but we're doing it very much in the way that you happen to digest gummy bears, although we've isolated only one ingredient from digestion in order to do this. If you look behind me, you'll see I have four stir plates and I'm sorry they're not all perfectly equivalent. Um, I do think I have them stirring approximately uh, about the same speed, which is important. Um, what I've got over here is a substance called trypsin, and trypsin uh, cuts apart proteins. If you recall from a previous video, gummy bears are made of gelatin, and gelatin happens to um, be made of protein. So trypsin cuts apart protein, so we expect it to cut apart uh, the gelatin in the gummy bear. We've also got here some trypsin as well. Now why does it look like this gummy bear's already dissolved and this one hasn't? The main difference there is the fact that trypsin is an enzyme. And any enzyme that's found in the body works best at what we call physiological temperature, which most of you think of as 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, but in Celsius we just tend to say 37 degrees centigrade or Celsius. Um, so enzymes that are normally in the body work best at 37 degrees C. And that's uh, what this is at. Actually, it's cooling down now that it's at room temperature. This trypsin, I have at 4 degrees centigrade, which is about the temperature of your refrigerator. And of course, that's warming up. Um, so clearly, you can see that um, uh, heated enzyme does work better at dissolving than does the cooled enzyme. So uh, trypsin works very well at this temperature. Uh, just in case you were wondering, well, is it just temperature? It, you know, does the enzyme actually, is the enzyme actually doing the work or is it just the heat that's dissolving the gummy bear? So I decided I would add an extra component to this uh, demonstration. And what I've got over here is a gummy bear in 37 degrees C uh, PBS. And PBS stands for phosphate buffered saline, which is pretty much the type of solution most of our cells are bathed in in the body. So we have a lot of water, but it's not distilled water, it's not tap water, it's mixed with a lot of salts. And uh, so that's what we're trying to recreate here is this more of a salty solution in our body. Um, so that's at 37 degrees C. And you can see that the liquid here is slightly green, but there's still plenty of gummy bear left, whereas in the trypsin there's nothing left. Um, over here again, just to keep our uh, variables straight, we see that um, this liquid is uh, clear and that's the PBS at 4 degrees C. So we can see that heat does have a little bit of effect on the, the melting of a gummy bear, um, but uh, trypsin actually works a lot better. So let's talk a little bit about trypsin. Let's talk about digestion. As you know, a gummy bear is made of gelatin and starch, other sugars, and wax. Well, it turns out our body is pretty well designed to dissolve all of these components within a gummy bear. And I just chose one thing to look at. In your mouth, when you start to chew a gummy bear, your salivary glands secrete several enzymes, but the most notable one is called amylase. And amylase breaks down sugar. If I had some amylase in the lab, I would have just uh, run amylase right along with this to see how quickly that dissolved the gummy bear as well. But since I didn't have it, uh, we're just using trypsin. So, um, and then once it goes, uh, the gummy bear is chewed up a little bit, it goes down to the stomach, where of course it is met by um, several different factors. One is uh, hydrochloric acid, which of course will pretty much destroy anything because the pH of this hydrochloric acid is uh, three. It's a very, very low pH. Good thing our cells um, are able to uh, grow and turn over very quickly. Every three days or so, our body produces new cells in the stomach because it's such a harsh environment. Um, but this hydrochloric acid is very important because there are other cells in our stomach that secrete something called pepsinogen. Pepsinogen, when it meets the hydrochloric acid, becomes pepsin, and pepsin is able to break down proteins as well. So proteins are very, very long strands of amino acids. And what pepsin does is it breaks the very long strands into somewhat shorter strands that we call peptides. So a lot of amino acids is a protein when it's in its final state. If we have sort of longer chains but they're not active, we call those peptides. And when we can finally break it down to its uh, final components, we call those amino acids. All right, so our stomach's working on uh, both um, the sugars and the fats 
and the uh, proteins in the gummy bear and then it's sent down to the small intestine which surprisingly is a high pH so our stomach is a our, our mouth is a fairly neutral pH our stomach is a very low pH our, our small intestine is a very high pH about 8 uh, physiological pH is about 7.2 so um, but once down in the small intestine the cells of the small intestine are not what are secreting most of the digestive enzymes those enzymes happen to come from the pancreas. The pancreas secretes uh, chymotrypsin and trypsin and uh, more amylase and lipase. So lipase will break apart the wax, the amylase will break apart the um, sugars and the starch, and then our trypsin and chymotrypsin are going to break apart the proteins. The great thing about trypsin, uh, it's very useful for chemists because trypsin breaks at very defined sequences within um, an, ami uh, an amino acid sequence, basically between uh, the amino acid lysine and the amino acid arginine, as long as neither of those are followed by uh, proline. So um, we are able to tell if we, if we act that on a protein, we can uh, get an idea of the sequence, um, which would take more time than I have to describe to you here. So um, then, so we know that trypsin is great at dissolving uh, our peptides that are coming from the stomach into smaller components which then um, are absorbed by the cells of the small intestine. So it's quite an elegant procedure here um, and the, the cool thing is we've discovered that we can isolate trypsin from uh, animals and we can use them for our purposes in the lab and in my lab what I happen to do is I grow cells and the cells like to stick on essentially a petri dish. You guys have probably all seen those, so we call them tissue culture dish. And they stick to those, and that makes perfect sense because when you think about the body, um, cells stick to each other. They're always on a surface, except for blood, which is flowing free. So most cells are what we call adherent, and they adhere to the dish by secreting proteins. So if we want to take those cells off the dish so we can perform experiments, what we end up doing is using trypsin and trypsin will uh, chop up those proteins and the cells will lift up off the plate and then we can do our experiments and then we can um, or we can put them back on a new dish so they can grow some more. Um, what else is trypsin good for? Well trypsin is awesome for breaking apart blood clots so if you know anything about the formation of a blood clot that is uh, formed with um, red blood cells, white blood cells and these proteins called fibrin. And fibrin, being a protein, might happen to have the amino acid sequences uh, with lysine and arginine next to each other. So if we add trypsin, trypsin can break apart these proteins and break apart the clots. Um, it's, uh, sometimes we use trypsin in the for, uh, production of baby food. It allows it to be pre-digested a little bit. And then, uh, so when you buy it, it's a little easier for your baby to digest. Um, it's, um, I'm trying to think, let's see, oh, for a disease that uh, we have um, lesser production of trypsin, cystic fibrosis stands out in my mind. Um, cystic fibrosis, it's an inherited disease, and what happens um, in, in one part of it is that the ducts are filled with mucus. So uh, the cells in the pancreas would normally secrete trypsin and chymotrypsin and amylase and lipase, but these ingredients cannot leave and get to the small intestine because the ducts are clogged with mucus. So that's uh, an example of a disease that involves trypsin. So um, I think, yeah, you can see that the warm PBS is working on it, but it's much slower. You can still see the gummy bear. So actually, I'm going to turn all of these off. So we can, oops, you too. And I'll just hold these up to the camera so you can see. So. This is uh, a gummy bear that has been completely digested in the presence of trypsin and heat. Um, this is uh, trypsin, uh, but not heated. So you can see the gummy bear is still fairly intact there. Um, that white thing in there is a stir bar. Uh, it's a magnetic stir bar, and in each of these plates happens to be a, um, a metal uh, device that turns, it spins, and then the magnet is attracted to that. So here we go. Here's a PBS that's heated. And so you can see the gummy bear is smaller, and we also happen to have a, a lot of green in the solution. 
And then finally the PBS that's at four degrees C. All right. Thank you so much for patiently listening about how uh, trypsin works and a little bit about digestion and the uses of trypsin in research and medical, um, medical treatments. All right, thanks so much, bye.